Hi everybody, uh, what's happening? I uh, hope you're all doing well at home right now and during these crazy times. My name is Lee Turbosic, magician, and I'd like to welcome you to the WHS Charity Ball that uh, we've gone virtual this year. Now, in these new times, uh, being a magician and bringing you cutting edge entertainment, I have to start to rethink my magic, you know? Uh, so what I've been doing is I've been working on some really cool stuff. Uh, I have something uh, for you that you utilizes my, my cell phone. And uh, I'm gonna do a really cool trick utilizing my cell phone, but during this, you have to remember that we are now performing in the virtual space. So you have to begin to question everything that you see. Like here, I'm gonna show you something really interesting. If I were to take a, uh, a playing card, that says uh, thank you on, because I'd like to say, to take this opportunity to thank our doctors and our nurses and all our healthcare workers at WHS for, uh, for all the things you do during these incredible uh, times that we're living through. But I wanna show you something really cool, all right? I'm gonna take my thank you card, I'm gonna take my cell phone. Check this out, if I take my cell phone and I take the card, in the back of my cell phone on the case, I have a little bit of a slip. But if I were to take this card, you're gonna see something really amazing start to happen. Watch what happens. I'm going to cause this card to begin to penetrate right through my cell phone. Just like so, you can see it is now going right through, right through the phone. Just like so. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go nice and slow here. I'm going to show you it is really going through that phone. I'm going to slowly take the thank you card all the way through, just like so. See, now remember I said that you should be questioning everything you see, because you've been watching really closely, but you probably missed something. You see, right here on my phone, that camera, see that's technically, that's really not a camera. See what that is, is that's actually a sticker of a camera lens. And the, uh, the, the front, you see that looks like a screen, but in all actuality, it's just a piece of cardboard. And this isn't a phone, but yet it's a solid piece of Pittsburgh steel. Welcome to the party. Good evening and welcome to the first ever Washington Health System Virtual Ball. My name is Sarah Schumacher and I am the Executive Director at the Washington Health System Foundation. Hi, I'm Brooke Ward. I'm the President and CEO of the Washington Health System. Thank you for joining us as we host this first ball, as I said. As a reminder, please make sure that you have registered through our online site to bid on the auction items. Now, we have a treat for you. We know some of you are gathered safely in small groups at your homes and are excited to mix your cocktails and arrange your charcuterie trays from our black tie box and cocktail kit. While celebrating at home, we ask that you join in the fun by posting selfies and group photos to your social media accounts under the hashtag 2021WHSBall. Next up, please enjoy a demonstration by Quantum Spirits using the kit that hopefully you have at home for your mixed drink. We also want to thank Pittsburgh's Berg Boxes and Boards for the beautiful charcuterie tray. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us. My name is Mel, I'm here on behalf of Quantum Spirits located in Carnegie, PA. Um, and we are responsible for what's in your drink boxes this evening. So I have two drinks that I would like to make for you. Um, luckily at home, you don't really have to do too much to them other than pour them over ice and enjoy so you can get right to it. But we just wanted to break it down and show you what we did so you knew exactly what you were drinking tonight. Um, just a little bit of background. So we do specialize in rye. Uh, so every spirit that we make is a base of rye grain. Um, so if you haven't had a rye vodka in the past, uh, I really hope you enjoy it. It's very smooth and it does have a little bit more taste to it than a corn base. So first drink that we are gonna start with is our cranberry. This is a cranberry base, as you can deduce, um, and a little bit of rosemary tea. So this is gonna go into our shaker tin, but again, at home, all you have to do is pour it over ice. What we're gonna do 
is take two ounces of the vodka. Next, we're gonna add about a half ounce of lime. And we're gonna add a half ounce of our rosemary tea. This is really easy too if you wanna make it at home. Um, it's literally boiled water and rosemary uh, leaves, not the stems. And you just boil it and let it steep for a little while. And there you go. Strain out the solids and you've got it. So we'll pour that in. We're gonna use regular simple syrup and this is just white sugar and water. We're gonna do a full ounce of this one. Okay, and lastly, we're gonna add in the cranberry juice. So we'll do about two ounces of that. Fantastic. All right, so this is a shaker drink. Let's add some ice. And if you're at home, you can just use your hands for that. Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> you can have less etiquette. Okay. Let's shake. And we are gonna strain. First, let's fill up that glass. This is gonna go into a highball um, if you have one. But you know what? It works in a rocks glass too. Totally your choice. Next, we're gonna pour that beautiful color right in. Now, if you're really feeling it, the rosemary, um, this is something that you can either just give it a little bit of a, a slap if you want to, to release some of those oils. However, um, I was gonna smoke it. <laughs> that sounds kind of funny. But it releases all of these beautiful scents and it really gives you a gorgeous rosemary smell on the nose. So if you have a lighter at home and you want to give that a try, by all means, just burn that down a little bit plop that in and you get this beautiful waft of rosemary right on the nose and that's it. Enjoy you guys. So that's the cranberry. Okay, the next drink that we're gonna make is a barrel rested gin old fashioned. Um, this is actually one of my favorite spirits that we make out of our entire collection. Uh, truth be told, I am a gin girl, but it, gin is very divisive. A lot of people either love it or they just don't. Um, and I just want to point out that the gins of yesteryear were very juniper forward, very pine tasting, um, and that can turn a lot of people off, which is not the case anymore. So the new American botanical style gins are packed with flavor. Uh, ours is loaded with cucumber and horace and black pepper, and of course juniper's in there, but pine is never gonna be the first thing you taste. What we did was we took our gin and we stuck it in a gorgeous whiskey barrel. Um, and what that does is it really mellows the botanicals and then it brings out this beautiful vanilla and smoky uh, flavor from the charred barrels. So instead of whiskey, I would love to introduce you to the barrel rested gin. So keep your minds open and just stick with me on this one. Okay, this is gonna be a stirring drink. And what we're gonna do is pour a generous two ounces of this delicious barrel rested gin. And then we have a, a beautiful simple syrup that we've added to this. Um, this is a summer simple and it does consist of lavender. We hit the rosemary one more time and uh, rhubarb bitters actually. So it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm not gonna put in more than a half ounce. And then we are going to top this off with 
the standard Angostura. Couple of drops there. This is a mega bottle. You can get normal bottles, it's just at any, even at your local Giant Eagle. We're gonna add some ice so we can mix this. Put in some fresh ice to our glass. And here's a little tip if you're ever mixing at home, um, take your bar spoon and make sure the back of it is against the glass and just concentrate on that. And then it's very, very smooth. So that's a little insider tip. Get that nice and chilled. Okay. We're gonna take our strainer. Pour that right in. And with our barrel rested gin, uh, I really like a lemon with this particular cocktail, um, but oranges work just as well, beautifully paired. So I'm gonna express the oil, and the trick to that is to make sure that your peel is down towards the drink. So when you squeeze it, that juice, all that expression of the oils goes right into your cocktail. Take the inner portion, rim your glass, give it a twist, and you're ready to drink. Thank you so much, everybody, and I really hope you love what's in those boxes. Thanks, Mel, for that demonstration. That was great. Who could have known over the last year what we would have dealt with as we had this worldwide pandemic that impacted literally everyone on Earth one way or another? And really, since the very beginning, the Washington Health System has tried hard to take care of all of your COVID needs, whether you had an inpatient stay, outpatient treatment, COVID testing, along with preparing our facilities, our ICUs, our COVID dedicated units to care for those folks. In addition to taking care of all of your COVID needs, we've also done all kinds of things to take care of you if you didn't have COVID. And now we're launching into our COVID vaccine. And so as you know by now, we have three vaccine clinics, one in Peters Township, one at the Crown Center Mall in Washington, and one in Waynesburg. And we have the capability of doing well over 10,000 vaccines per week. Unfortunately, we're not getting that much vaccine at this point, and so I know it's taking some time. Please be patient. I'm optimistic, though, that the vaccine's gonna improve the quantity and supply so we can get to you much faster and quicker. On top of all the things we did for COVID and preparing and taking care of your COVID vaccination needs, we've also been doing things to strengthen and improve our services, starting with cardiology. A little over a year ago, we added two new procedures, one called TAVR, the other one called Watchman. Both of these are a great improvement in the care. Both required open heart surgery. In the last year, we've done over 100 of these. And so for example, now instead of having to go through cardiothoracic surgery to have your aortic valve replaced, we can do that in the cath lab with people leaving that same day. We've done over 100 of those in the last year and we're gonna to continue to improve and expand cardiology. Now we talked about open heart surgery. We're gonna have an announcement this spring. We're gonna expand and improve that services. So please be prepared and wait for that announcement. On top of that, we're getting ready to announce some new improvements in orthopedics, and so we're gonna be announcing those this spring as well. In addition, we've done some great work with OB and Gynae Care. With the support of many of you, we completed a complete renovation of our OB labor and delivery unit, a $7 million renovation that opened a year ago. We would have had each and every one of you there to celebrate and see the unit, but of course, because of COVID, we couldn't do that. And we celebrated the one year anniversary of that inpatient unit just a few weeks ago. Along with the staff, the eight very talented physicians, we've also received some recognition. HealthGrades is a national company that rates hospitals based on their clinical and patient satisfaction outcomes. They've given us their 2020 Labor and Delivery Excellence Award. They only give that to the top 10% performing hospitals in the entire country, and we're one of them. So we have a great service, great quality, and great outcomes for the women of our community. In addition, HealthGrades gave us their General Surgery Excellence Award. That's for four abdominal surgery, again, providing great service for the people of our community. So there's a lot of great things going on. We're gonna to continue to expand and improve for you each and every day. So in addition to the improvements in the services that we just talked about, I wanna make sure that you know it's safe to come back for COVID and non-COVID care. We know a lot of you put off care during this time because you were concerned about being exposed. Please don't do that. Our facility and our staff are in great shape to care for you, and we wanna make sure that your health care is not put on hold please come in and let us take care of you. Thank you, Brooke, for the health system update. Now, another trick from Lee. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hey, good to be with you. Thanks for having me. Uh, well, we're back with some more magic for you all. 
And uh, while well, we're gonna spice this up a little bit with a little bit of a uh, little naughty, all right? I'm gonna get a little naughty for a second. This trick requires a little bit of hardware, a little bit of hardware. Uh, in, this, uh, in this little bag here, I, I, this, is where I keep, uh, this is where I keep my nuts. There we go, all right? Mm-hmm, yep. You've counted them, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, you're impressed. I can see the look on your face, right? You're saying, huh, three. I wonder what his mom said. She called me special. Man, was my dad proud, right? Right? I have a twin brother. A lot of people don't know that. His name's Ace. <laughs> That'll circulate. All right, here we go. It's a three nut trick. That's all you have to know. Three nut trick, all you have to know. Three nut trick, here we go. So it, uh, I'm gonna put one in my hand. I'm gonna put two in the hand. I'm gonna put the third nut over here inside my pocket. I know you're watching close. How many inside the hand? Two. I told you, the three nut trick. One, two, three. All right, you'll catch on, you're gonna catch on, all right? Here we go, one in the hand, two in the hand, third nut inside my pocket. I know you're watching close. How many inside the hand? Two. What's the trick called? <laughs> it's called the three nut trick for a reason, because it uses one, two, three nuts. Last time, last time. One in the hand, two in the hand, third one over here inside my pocket. I know you're watching close. I can feel your, your eyes burning my hands right now, all right? How many inside the hand? Three. Because it's the three nut trick. I just didn't tell you one thing. Occasionally I screw up. All right, all right, I screwed up. It's a screw. It's a sc the comedy's hitting, I think. I think the comedy's hitting through the, through the camera too, yeah? No? All right, they don't, they're not all winners. Here's what we'll do though. We're gonna take the bolt, that goes into the left hand, the two nuts, they go over here inside the pocket. Now I know you're watching close. You're all watching close. Cause here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna cause the nuts that are in my pocket to travel from my pocket and link themselves back on the bolts. There we go. Both nuts are now threaded on that bolt. You can take my, my word for it, they really are, but if you wanted to touch them, you really could. They're really threaded on there. I play a little game. If you can take the two nuts off the bolt in under 10 seconds, I give you a $100 bill, give it a go. No one ever wins, don't worry about that. But, but thanks for playing. All right, well let's do a little bit more magic for you. Now, playing cards for me have been one of my favorite ways to perform, uh, they're my favorite type of magic. Now, this deck of cards that I'm gonna, I'm gonna perform with, you see, these are marked cards. And I know these are marked cards because they say marked cards really big, <laughs> making it very obvious. But they're not marked how you think, they're not marked for cheating, you see. These cards are actually marked on the edge, like this. There's this little barcode, right, stamped right on the edge of that deck of cards, all right? Each card literally has literally a part of a code right on the edge of that playing card. And when you put all the playing cards together, you get that barcode. Now here's what I'm gonna do. Before we even get into this, I wanna show you that these cards are completely mixed up. You all can see that, yes? All mixed up? Very good. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna have a, a playing card selected, and uh, would you do me a favor? Very simple. I need you just to call it stop anywhere you like as I run my thumb down this pack. So say stop anywhere you like. Right there? I'll pick up right here. Uh, we'll make this one yours. Right? We'll show that around so you all have a, a chance to remember it. We'll show it to the camera as well so you at home can see it too. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that card back into the deck, and I'll get back to it in a second. You see, I've showed you these cards completely mixed up, and I've explained this strange barcode. Now, I wanna go into a little more depth of what this barcode is. You see, if I were to take this barcode and I were to cut it in half, and I were to give these cards a weave shuffle, as in I'm just weaving the cards together, but you see, with the shuffle that I'm about to do is completely unique. It is called an unshuffle, meaning that I'm going to unshuffle this pack of cards. Watch. Did that look like a shuffle? It sounded like a shuffle. It wasn't a shuffle. Because this was an unshuffle. Because if you watch the ink on that deck of cards now, that barcode will start to spell out the words. Unshuffled. Four times going down that deck of cards. Representing the clubs, the hearts, the spades, 
and the diamond. Now, if I were to give these cards a, uh, another cut, about half, right, right about there, and I were to give these cards another unshuffle, right about there. Watch the ink. Another unshuffle. Sounds like a shuffle, looks like a shuffle. It's not a shuffle. See, it's an unshuffle because right now, those four have now changed into two. And it now unsho says unshuffled two times on that edge of those client cards. Now, if I were to give the cards one last cut and give the cards one last unshuffle, watch. Those of you who jumped ahead already probably are assuming that it just spelled out one gigantic unshuffled, and those of you would be right, which is pretty amazing. What I didn't tell you is I was doing something very important with my 10 fingers. You see, I was manipulating every single playing card so that when I showed you the cards now, they would be back in new deck order, ace through king, ace through king, king through ace, king through ace, every card in numerical, sequential, perfect deck order. That is only a decade of my life crammed into three minutes. But you see, I have one problem. I uh, was able to bring the cards, the spell out on shuffle four times, two times, one time, and now put the cards back in new pack order, but I am forgetting something here. Your, your selected card that you're thinking of right now, those of you at the table are thinking of it, even at home you're thinking of it. You see, it says unshuffled, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit more magic here, and if I were to rearrange unshuffled, just in the correct way, placing the barcode at the exact spots that I need so that I could show you now that the card that you were thinking of should begin to appear. Ten of hearts. <laughs> what? Thanks, Lee. That was an amazing card trick. As Brooke noted, and I'm sure you know in your personal life, the only constant thing in our world right now is change. And we saw that in the 2020 Charity Ball nearly a year ago. Our hearts were broken as an organization and volunteer committee. These folks poured themselves into planning a fantastic event that ultimately we had to cancel. It was set to be a record-breaking year with the highest net revenues to go to teen outreach and also with the highest attendance in the history of the foundation. Tonight's presentation wouldn't be possible without the support of our top sponsors, the Washington Auto Mall and the UPMC Health Plan. Please also take a moment to review the printed program to look at other sponsors for tonight's program. All the proceeds from the support of our sponsors and you are gonna to go to the Washington Health System's greatest need this year. Traditionally, our annual charity ball is not only an avenue to raise funds for one of our WHS programs, it is also an opportunity to recognize a deserving individual or organization in our community. This year's honoree is Dr. Mary Jo Pudgersky, Executive Director of the WHS Teen Outreach and founder and president of Academy for Adolescent Health. I have known Mary Jo the majority of my life as she was my comprehensive sexual education teacher. I am honored to call her my friend. Sarah, I couldn't agree more that Mary Jo is deserving of this wonderful award. The relationship with the Teen Outreach and the Washington Health Center started back in 1988 in a partnership to provide training and education to kids. To date, we provided training to over 250,000 young people ages 6 to 12 in 46 school districts. And the outcome of Mary Jo's work is lowered teen pregnancy rate from 39 per thousand to 12 per thousand, which is an amazing feat, best in class in our state. In addition, the Peer Education Center started in 1995, training 11,000 teens. We've also opened the Common Ground Teen Center, and Mary Jo's run that since 2008, where 2,500 teens have gone there for 33,000 visits, which is amazing. Mary Jo personally welcomed me to town when I moved here 10 years ago, and we hit it off from the very beginning, and she's been a friend ever since. So I'm personally pleased to be able to present the 2021 Washington Health System Foundation Distinguished Service Award to Mary Jo. It's hard to describe Mary Jo in one word. I would say, though, my best answer is sort of force of nature. 
I've always told her that it's not about what she does, it's who she is. And so, this cliche, I guess unique, is one word. Oh, wow. One word to describe Mary Jo. Dedicated. I have other words, but that's the best one I think of. I think, I think she's extremely dedicated. Generous. Generous. I'd say genuine. So there are so many words to describe Mary Jo, like loving, caring, kind, supportive. But in front of each of those words, you could put genuine. She's always genuinely kind, genuinely caring. To describe Mary Jo in one word would be present. If she's with you, she's with you 100%. The word I would use to describe her is supportive. I'm sure a lot of people have used the word respect, so I'm going to take two words. I'd use the words unconditional love. So what I've learned from my mom slash Mary Jo is probably everything, of course. Um, she taught me how to be the woman that I am um, in small things and in big things. She's taught me compassion and respect, and then in being here at the outreach, um, she's obviously more than just my mom. She's now my mentor and someone that I strive to just basically become. Well, I always tell this story. She, um, I saw her speak a couple times, and I've, I've done some of that myself. Uh, I'm not as good as her. Um, and I've gone over the country doing it and met a lot of people, watched them, observed them. I can say that she's the only person that I've actually, when she's speaking, I'm taking notes, just the way she does things. Her way, the way that she connects with people, and it, it could be any age, the way she builds a bridge with her words and makes people feel at ease. I mean, I, she uses, she does things that I write down and I don't even think she realizes she's doing it, but uh, I admire that greatly about her. Uh, I'm Landon Weekland, and I'm one of the college age supervisors of the Common Ground Teen Center. The impact that she's had on the community is definitely sex education. I've, on TV and other things you see so much that uh, it's not always full circle kind of stuff and she's definitely raised that up so that way like things like teen pregnancy and overall um, misinformation has gone down. Mary Jo is a wonderful person and I'm so glad that she's part of my life. I couldn't imagine where I would be if it weren't for the Common Ground Teen Center and Mary Jo herself. The impact that I think Mary Jo and the Teen Outreach has had on this community is that we've given kids who don't have a place to go a safe place to be. A place where they can feel respected, accepted, and cared for. Knowing that Mary Jo's been in the school since the late 70s, and some of those teens <laughs> that she worked with are now in their 50s, I think the impact just goes on and on. Um, those, young, those young people that she's touched throughout all those years are living probably healthier lives, um, have more respect for themselves and for others, and probably have a healthier relationship um, with their own sexuality. I've learned a lot from Mary Jo. I learned that, um, you know, one of our mottos is each person is a person of worth. So respecting everyone from whatever background they come from, um, I think I've learned just how to have better peer interactions, better interactions with um, those younger than me. Everything that you can't learn in a textbook, everything regarding racial injustice, gender identity, uh, mental health, women's health, I, I don't think there's a thing that I haven't learned from her, honestly. I think Mary Jo and the Teen Outreach have impacted the community by giving it a common space, a safe space. Uh, we have the talent show every year to fundraise the entire outreach. We have this teen center for teens to just come and hang out and have a place to chat. We have the essays. I mean, she's, her and the outreach have given us opportunities and things to do that is more than sitting at home, playing on her phones and playing video games at home. We're able to be together. So I think that's what her and the outreach have done. I've learned so much from Mary Jo in the time that I've known her. Um, I'd say the biggest thing is just how I interact with people. So Mary Jo treats everyone like her equal, no matter their social background, their socioeconomic status, um, their age, like she treats everyone like her equal. And so she's taught me how to do that a lot. Mary Jo and the Teen Outreach has had a very big impact on the community. Um, I know personally that she has taught a lot of people how to respect each other and how to make a lot of spaces in town and just safer all around. She's accepting. She makes everybody feel safe. 
Um, so just her presence and her, the company or the, the entity of Teen Outreach has been unbelievable. Washington's Got Talent gives an outlet too for those, uh, a lot of teens, they have angst. They want to maybe showcase themselves without, you know, and, and she allows them to do that. So anything she's a part of is going to benefit and be positive. Every community in this world needs a Mary Jo. On behalf of all of my family, my sister, my brother, all of our partners, and our six children that she is now an amazing grandmother for, that she has impacted our lives. She is, she is the rock to our family, and we are just so blessed and lucky to have her in our life, and we're so proud of her and everything that is coming towards her. She is worth it. It is so wonderful to be able to say thank you. I wish we were in person, but thank yous are important. So I would like to share how much I appreciate this award. And to do that, I'd like to tell you a little bit about why I do what I do. There are three reasons that my philosophy of life is what it is. The first is I was raised by amazing parents. Most of you know that if you know me. The second is my work in pediatric oncology taught me a lot about life, how quickly it changes, Working with dying children really showed me how I wanted to live. And third, I was motivated to work in sexuality primarily because of a 12-year-old. I was with a young woman, so young, for 19 hours while she had her baby and came out of that deciding that I would teach sex ed. Oh, I had no idea how I was going to do it. So here we are, quite a long time since the 70s, and I have been blessed to do work I love. I decided way back in the 70s, if I didn't love what I was doing, I wouldn't do it. And I've been very fortunate to be able to love exactly what I do. So to say thank you, because no effort of worth happens alone, I would like to thank first my family, my husband Rich, our kids, Amy, Lisa, and Nate, their spouses, Paul, Evan, and Aaron, and our grandkids, because they shore me up, they give me strength, they bring me so much joy. And then, and this is important, I want to talk about what the Washington Health System has meant to my mission. I could never have done what I've done without the health system. Going back to Telford Thomas through Gary Weinstein and Brooke Ward, I have had support beyond measure for everything I tried to do, for everything I began to do, and the health system gave me credibility that I would not have had alone. One of the best things about the work I've done is that I have connected with so many young people and now they're not so much young. I just recently taught a grandchild of someone I taught in the beginning in 1988. So I'm lucky to be here. I'm grateful to be here. And finally, I'd like to thank my staff and everyone in this community who supports me and that's a lot of people. I don't do anything by myself, but each of you is worthy that's what I believe, that each person is a person of worth. And I am deeply grateful for this acknowledgement. I will continue doing the work I love as long as God gives me the days. Thank you. Congratulations again to Mary Jo for this honor and all the work she's done for our youth over the many years she's been in our community. It's been an honor and a privilege to know her and to award her this today. I also want to take a moment to recognize another special group of individuals. These are the members of the Washington Hospital Auxiliary. Most people don't know the Auxiliary started the ball decades ago. They continue to serve on the ball committee and they volunteer at the events almost every single year. This group is led by the current president, Marlene Rhodes. I'd also like to thank and recognize the Washington Health System Green Auxiliary. This group is led by Debbie Wilson and many of them are anxious to get back as we open new services. These two groups of amazing individuals account for over 300 volunteers who helped us pre, during, and post COVID. And I know we're not through COVID, but they are anxious to get back and they're helping us as services get up and running. These volunteers are amazing individuals who come in every day to help you, our patients, and our staff each and every day. And I wanna thank them personally for all they've done. Now we'd like to bring back Lee for another presentation of his magic skills. Sarah, hi. Thanks, thanks for helping me out with this. No problem. Do you have a, well first, are you a fan of the Pittsburgh Penguins? Sure. Perfect. Do you have a favorite pen? Um, sure. Name them. Who you got? 
Well, I was going to say flurry, but that was going to be wrong. That's okay. No, you can, you can pass or present. Doesn't, haven't played in a while. That doesn't matter. He, he's still your favorite? There you go. Boom! Little flurry right there. That's my little Marc Andre flurry. Get him from his good side right there. Right, looking, looking sharp. He's, he's very handsome. He's a handsome guy. Do you have a second favorite penguin other than flurry? Um, one that's missing teeth. That's, there's a lot of choices there. Um, uh, well, Crosby. He, actually, he, has it. he has always teeth, but he has he, he has lost them on occasion though. So we'll go with Sid. We'll go with so we have uh, flurry. And if we want to get a Sid, you see, you just ro roll flurry back and forth like this and what happens is watch what happens. You can start to just split. And so you're gonna you're gonna get two. And you get you get your your Sid in your flurry. That's just normal to you, isn't it? Alright, here we go. <laughs> watch how this works. Watch. I'm gonna put one in my left hand, one in my right hand. One over here, one over here. Watch how this works there. If I crisscross just like so for a second, you see Sid jumps from my left hand and he reappears inside my right hand. Kind of weird, right? Now here we'll try that with you. So go like this, give me your hand like this. Perfect. I'll put uh, sit in my hand. I'll put Malk in there, or flurry in yours. Now, all I do is watch. If I take sit, I bring it ever so close, just like so. It jumps. He jumps from my hand. Check it out. And inside yours. Yeah. Kind of weird. All right. Now we'll do it again. This time, Sarah, I'll let you pick. Which one do you want? Do you want uh, flurry or do you want Crosby? Crosby. Hold your hand like this. Uh, we'll give you Crosby. You squeeze tight on Crosby, just like so. Yeah, just like there, yeah. I'll put Mick, uh, McFlurry inside my pocket. All right, actually I'll put him inside my front pocket. He's gonna jump from my pocket all the way back, open up, and then you get, you see he jumps right back inside your hand. And then we're gonna go for the big finish here. You see, if I were to take Flurry and Crosby, put them together, this time we'll put them inside here. Bring that hand just like this on the table. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna leave them in there just a little bit longer. You see, we're gonna build up a little time here. Time builds a little bit of friction, a little bit of friction builds a little bit of heat. You know what happens when all that heat starts to get together with the Pittsburgh Penguins? They, they, oh, they catch on fire, right? And when they're on fire, they bring the whole team. Check it out. You get all of them, right? Yeah, right there. Yeah. What? Right? Oh yeah, and show that to the camera. What do we got? We got the, uh, oh, the mini, the little mini Stanley Cup. You know what we do with the Stanley Cup in this city? Well, no, we first we go back to back. What? Then we take it to Mary Lemieux's house and throw it in the swimming pool, because that's what Pittsburghers do. Thank you so much. We want to thank all the sponsors who supported us for this virtual event, and a special thank you to our top sponsors, Washington Auto Mall, UPMC Health Plan, Key Bank, Concordia Visiting Nurses, and Concordia Hospice of Washington, EQT Corporation, Steptoe & Johnson, Southwestern Pennsylvania Eye Center, Doctors Davis, Salvetti, and Piramici and Washington Financial Bank. At Washington Honda, taking care of our customers is our top priority. Now more than ever, we're working hard to keep you and our associates healthy and safe. Whether you shop online or on the lot, we'll deliver your new car to your front door at no extra fee. It's just one more way we're keeping your best interests in mind. The vehicle you want from the dealership you trust, Washington Honda. It really is all at the mall. Thank you all for investing your time at our virtual event tonight and for your continued support for our efforts. In closing, I would like to thank the following individuals for their time, talents, and treasures in moving our health system forward. All of our WH boards of directors led by Chair Brian Smith and the foundation board members led by Jana Phyllis Grimm. Brooke Ward and the administrative staff, all of our WHS team members and leaders, and of course the foundation team. All are certainly healthcare heroes. As you can see, many people were involved in planning this evening's event. One very special group and important to this evening is the ball committee. This group is led by co-chairs Katie Unger-Chips and Kim Lambert. They have poured themselves into making sure that this evening's event was enjoyable for all of you. Thank you for joining us this evening. In addition to the printed program, it will also be available on our YouTube link 
as well as our website. That way you can check out all of the sponsors and auction donors for this evening, as well as the listing of the ball committee members. In addition, we'd like you to enjoy this video that was recorded last spring as a tribute to our frontline workers. Thank you again for your contribution, your support, and your time tonight. Stay safe and have a great 2021. Blessed be, hallelujah, peace to me and peace to you. Pray to God, seek the truth, say amen and pay your dues and go home. Ease my mind, touch my soul, know my heart by the fruit I grow. Hug a tree, call a friend, find a love that doesn't end and hold on. On behalf of Rehab Services at Washington Health System, we'd like to thank you for your support during this unprecedented time. Fight to fight, win the war, shine a light, feed the poor, blessed be, hallelujah, may Department would like to thank you, Washington County. Peace to you everywhere. Did you think I didn't care? Love is love, pain is pain. Deep inside, we're all the same, don't you know? The radiology department would like to thank the community for all your love and support. You have helped lift us up during this pandemic. We will never forget your kindness. Thank you. Fight the fight, win the war, shine a light, feel the ball, blessed be, hallelujah. May the Lord bring peace to me and peace to you. Peace to you. Health System Green, we would like to thank the community for their support and commitment to our hospital. Thank you! Thank you for your thoughtfulness. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your compassion. Six East Healthcare Heroes would like to thank the heroes in the community that supported us during the recent pandemic. Thank you from administration. Thank you! Have... That's all right. <laughs> we, 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 we. We're awesome. We're standard. And Laura Palinchar. <laughs> I'm glad you have Brooke, this part. <laughs> thank you for this. He gets the data and I get the name. We want to thank Quantum Spirits. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> have her. The other one called Watchmen. Both of these two replace. Oh, hi. Okay, now you got me done. <laughs> I'm thinking charcuterie. Charcuterie? <laughs> we could have given you that one. No, okay. You need to stop it. <laughs> Should we she's drink losing, before? She's losing it. <laughs> That's the question. Too far. Appreciation. We want to take a moment to thank tonight's sponsors again. once again. <laughs> that was probably the best one. I couldn't help it. I don't know. I could see it. I thought maybe you guys didn't have him in the show. <laughs> <laughs> and stay safe. We should come back what with a Maroon. <laughs> stay freaky, San Diego. Whatever he says, I can't remember. Okay.